Hey, writers, welcome to the next in the series of Silenced No More, Empowering the Next Generation of Women Author Insights. I am so excited to welcome today Michelle Googlemeyer. Google Michelle, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Yay. And I even practiced saying your name and then I messed it up. So, it, and I came up with mnemonic really, and everything. Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, let's just start with. We're going to get into talking about your your chapter and your author journey, but let's start with what's your passion? What's your mission? What lights you up in this life? You know, it's really um, holding space for and helping people to discover their authenticity and, and empowering them to allow that to show. Um because really, no matter where we are in our career, our profession, um, I feel like that foundation sends out so many ripples into all the other areas of our life. It's like ground zero mm -hmm. um, is that self-empowerment and knowing who we really are. Sometimes it takes a minute to remember. Yeah. And it seems to me you talked about two components there because there's the knowing and then you also said the showing and that yes. just really caught in my mind. Like, I love how you said that perfectly. Yes. That there needs to be um, sometimes, I mean, there needs to be the space, but sometimes there also needs to be like a specific invitation and even some know-how <laughs> in how to do both of those. Like, Absolutely. So what, what are the modalities that you work within to help people know and show that authenticity? Mm. So it's really um, an intuitive process that I begin with. Mm. And I tap in with them. Um, I use divination tools. And then I just see what comes as I'm also a, a medium and a channeler. And so many times just one thing they say will really open up a channel for a flood of information to come through. So I might share with them a piece that might be coming through and I'll wait to see that residence in their eyes. And then from then it just sparks. Yeah. Um, it's usually a pretty effortless process because it's almost like I'm unlocking something for them and then just pausing you know, pausing to allow them to decide, do I want to step forward? Am I prepared for what I want to see? Um, and I try to just reinforce for them that I will be here as they go through that process. And sometimes that process takes a little bit of time too. Yeah. Um, just depending on conditioning or, uh, you know, sometimes it's really people have been in a profession for a long period of time and it could even be a highly skilled profession. And sometimes they realize this doesn't light my fire anymore. What, what is it that lights my fire? And they're not even sure because they've been doing such amazing things in such amazing areas, but they're burnt. They're burnt out. Right. The spark's been gone. So how do we reignite it? And so that's really what it is like coming back to center. Nice. And we can, we can get so used to things right? And they can feel okay, even, you know, it might not be that you're miserable um, in a in a job, but it's like, where is that path back? So it sounds almost like dropping breadcrumbs. Yes. <laughs> and you're like, here's something and then people can either lean in toward it, or they can leave it there, but it becomes like a pathway back with like a series of saying yes, you know, I just um, thought about my um, yoga practice this morning, I did this great video for like stretching hip strings and, and Ooh, lower back and hip yeah. flexors. Yes. And there's this one exercise where you're stretching your hip flexors and she keeps guiding to like stretch up on the inhale and then just like keep melting on the nice. exhale. And she says, trust that eventually you will melt into it. And I was like, that feels so good. Right. And then that sounds like we're, what you're describing where just keep breathing with it and seeing where it goes and trust that you'll melt into it eventually. I love it. And I love <laughs> yoga analogies too. And, um, you know, part of it is it's like, we just get on autopilot, you know, we get yeah. really great at perfecting systems and being really efficient and being really powerful in the areas that we're in. And then we realize life has changed and the world has evolved 
and it's okay for us to do that too. Um, and you know, you were talking about the hip flexors and, and sometimes it's just the science of it. Like there is a beginning and there is an end to most things and there's an up and there's a down and there's a forward and there's a back and it's okay to move in those ways. Yeah. This feels like a perfect segue to writing to me because it seems like, um, one of the reasons we really get stuck is because we forget to pause and take that mm -hmm. time to, to step outside and look and go, is this still working for me? And, um, my experience is that writing is often the powerful tool for doing that, whether it's journaling or, you know, even writing a poem, but like allowing the words to flow through you and you get some deeper insight. So tell us about your writing practice. Do you use writing in your work? What's your personal writing practice? Yeah. How, how does writing show up for you? I've always loved it. Um, it's always been just a, a oh, a, a juicy thing, a dessert, you know? Yeah. Um, I had a really serious back surgery when I was 13. Um, I was in the hospital for two weeks. Uh, it was extremely invasive. And my mother brought me my very first journal. Oh, wow. And she asked me to write through the process of it because she knew that it would be a way for me to heal of the trauma of it. And it was extremely traumatic. And because of it, I, I was not able to do things I loved anymore, ride horses and so on and so forth. So there was an element of grief that was happening too. And that was, I mean, that was it. It was over. And I have all of my journals that I've had like all through childhood. I put them in this pile and I put like 100 rubber bands around them and I've had them forever. And I just stuck them away in like the cedar chest you get, you know, from your folks. And I pulled them out a couple years ago and started going through them. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to pull out and throw away some things, just the silly parts, you know, like Susie's talking about Joe or whatever. I pulled <laughs> out those parts and I just kept the meaty parts, the, the transition parts, the evolution yeah. parts. You dumped the ego parts and you kept the soul parts. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. This is going to be the framework for all of my forward going journals. And so it was like, there's that forward backward or that, you know, and I thought, how wise was it that she learned that yeah. all the way back then? And that must have lent itself well to my school being in school because um, it was always one of my best subjects. I even won some awards throughout my education process for writing. Um, my husband died tragically mm -hmm. at age 40 about 10 years ago. And I wrote a blog under a pen name for a period of time afterwards as a cathartic measure. Um, I will write all kinds of things, but for fun, you know, um, I think I've always fancied myself kind of an amateur writer, but I think I've never had the guts mm. to feel like I could stand up against other people who are published. Um, mm. I always had this thought that, you know, I would probably be better writing something like a screenplay or a sitcom or something like that, because I feel like there's less technical um, perfectionism needed. And that would allow me to kind of like my maybe inadequacies to slip through the cracks. You know? there, um, it's, it's, um, there's a, a layer that, of yes. separation, right? Because there are right. people performing your words as opposed to somebody is reading them and directly interacting exactly. with them. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, it, it's just really been a love or a passion, not necessarily yeah. something that I thought I could pursue as, you know, a main stay. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. I think so many people watching can relate to this feeling of knowing the power of writing. You know, you've talked about using it to heal and using it for catharsis. And the fact that you started a blog to process your grief is so beautiful. Um, 
and thank you for doing that. Thank you for helping the world in that way, right? The people who go through a major grief and don't process it in some kind of healthful way, what ends up happening, it gets stuck inside of them and it it doesn't help them and it can often explode or, you know, it, it stops their light from shining. So thank you. Um, but I bet so many people can relate to that feeling of, well, I know that this is helpful for me. I know that I enjoy it, but it feels like there's some gatekeeper or some barrier. And on the other side are the real writers. And here I am as just regular old me. Yes. And um, like, I have to get wait, I have to wait to get called up or, or chosen. And, you know, that literally used to be the case. You know, if we go back in um, history a long time, only the very wealthy had printing presses and they got to print whatever they wanted. Oh, and then, wow. you know, in the last 20 years or so, th that's how book publishing has been, right? There are like the five big publishing houses and yes. they get to decide and they're in charge. And in the last, I may be doing the years wrong. I just, my, my sense of time is not my <laughs> strong suit, but like, you know, that's been the history. And within the last 10 years with the rise of self-publishing and hybrid publishers, there's this opportunity for um, like equal distribution of the, it's like no. the internet, right? Yes. Equal distribution of the power to disseminate your ideas. Yes. And, and I find it so fascinating that because we had, I think this is part of it anyway, um, there are other, other things that come into play, but we created this sense that only some people get to be writers in large part, I think based on just access to dissemination. And it was like a feudal system where like we're at the bottom as the peasants and we're like, well, I guess I'm not meant to be a writer in the same way. I guess I'm just meant to like work in the hot sun, hoeing the weeds every day while the Lord is in the manor. And it's like, no, wait a minute. Why do I really believe that that's how source and creativity works, that mm -hmm. some people are chosen and they're supposed to express themselves and the rest of us aren't like, no. Seriously, but, spot yeah. on. Yeah, but we can. It's I, I and I. I've felt that way on so many occasions, and I I get it. So it's not like oh, why would we feel this way? I know why we feel this way, but I love also just digging it up by the root and going, oh, this is this is really just kind of like a an old feudal <laughs> idea. It is. Let's toss it. Let's toss it. it. So talk more about then the. I don't know if you would say the bravery, the courage, the spark, the passion. Um, what led you to um, say yes to contributing as an author for Silence No More? And take it that writing from just for you to. <laughs> <laughs> it was absolutely bravery and courage because it came through. Um, I'm, I honestly don't quite remember both. Annette and I have tried to figure it out. Um, I don't remember how I, I came across the information, but I did and reached out to her and she got back to me right away and I was processing it and I stalled out my mm -hmm. conditioned self, um, reared up and I literally didn't get back to her for two weeks. Um, and I blamed it on all kinds of things. Um, but it, I knew, I knew what I, I knew what I was doing. I knew that I was in a fear mode. I knew that I was having imposter syndrome, all of that, but there was that it was, it was my, my intuition. It was my guides. It was that it wasn't even a nudge. It was like, I'm going to push you and you're going to fall in the mud kind of thing. Um, <laughs> like you're, you're doing this, you are doing this and um, I'm very good to, as somebody who gives readings to people, I get a lot of readings and mm -hmm. I had yeah. given information earlier in the year that I was going to be doing shadow work around my mother for this entire year. So I thought, I wonder if this is part of that, you know, I'll just ask myself these questions. I'll pose questions to myself. I wonder if my mama, you know, and so I'm like, okay, I'm doing it. I'm making the decision. I'm not going to waffle about. I'm doing this. So I'm going to just go all in. And then I didn't know what I was even going to talk about. It took collaborating with all these other amazing beings for it to then another there. They were the key for me. And I stepped through the door. Mm. And 
that was a process in its own. It's like, I've been through so yeah. many levels of processing through this and I, and each one, I gained a new self-awareness and a new self-love. Um, and I really feel a new skill, to be honest, just the process of it. The, the process of writing your, your chapter? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. just the small little technical parts of it. Um, so yeah, it's been extremely fulfilling. Yeah. There's, oh, I, there's so much beautiful wisdom in what you just shared because it, it, we may think, well, the way you write a book or contribute a chapter to a book is, well, I know what I'm going to write. And so here it is. Um, and your process was, I know that I'm going through this process, like the, the shadow work. Um, I wonder if this opportunity is meant to be part of that. Yes, it is. Okay, great. Then I'm going to say yes to this opportunity, not knowing what will come forward. That's some, exactly. that, that's some ovaries right there, woman. Right. Yeah. So when you said bravery and courage, you were yeah. literally linking yeah. into what it was for me. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that. And again, you know, just bringing this to an experience other people may have where you have that real knowing inside of you that it is time to write and maybe an opportunity comes up and then your analytical thinking egoic mind says like yeah but we don't know what to write or that story is not complete yet or oh you know you're not um when you feel that call to write what you're meant to share is going to come to you and then the opportunity is then to not just tell a story that maybe you've told a lot of times before but to find out what your like what's in the highest good for you right now to write so you can grow through it like when you write it you really <laughs> grow through it especially Absolutely. when you write it for other people to read it's almost oh. like what we said in the very beginning about finding that authenticity right yeah. i mean it's it's a very similar process i feel yeah. Um, it, it it is um, an it's opening. It's the breadcrumbs. Thing. It's that self-awareness. Yes. Yeah. And it's an opening to um mm. up level. And yes. we may think of up leveling as like getting a promotion or we have all these positive associations, but oftentimes in my experience and in talking with, you know, other wise women, um there's a lot of releasing and letting go and shedding mm. and breaking down so you can break through that happens so we can move to that next place where we want to be. So <laughs> we may not even it happens know on so be. many levels. I mean, yeah. I remember that week when I finished the chapter, I was exhausted for the next mm -hmm. week. Yeah. And I knew that that exhaustion was my physical body do, doing, doing whatever it was doing, improving its immunity or whatever it needed that rest for. It was trying to match the other areas that I had up leveled in yeah. emotionally, um, mentally, my body was now catching up. I knew that that's what that exhaustion was about. So yeah, so many, so many levels, so many layers. That's awesome. Yeah. And an important reminder and something to normalize too, because people often beat up on themselves if they go through some kind of big, you know, life event and then they get sick or then they just feel blah. Yes. Um, but it's, yeah, as you say, it's your body catching up. It's your body's nice catching up. Yeah. It's That's changing awesome. its cellular makeup. Yeah. Um, so take us through a little bit of your your process because you said you felt like you gained some more technical skills. What did you learn about your writing process going through this? And um, is there something that you're very proud of about your experience of writing your chapter? Um, oh my goodness. You know what? I I would say that as far as my technical process, um, improving you know, I think with social media and the internet and our world and um, the way we communicate with each other now, as a person who loves words and loves books and loves writing, I'm sometimes disappointed in how the crispness of words seems to like be losing its edge sometimes in terms of language and how we speak. Um, and I'm sometimes just lamenting how it used to be, you know, <laughs> yeah. whatever that means. Um, and this was a reminder to me that I don't have to buy into that. This, it was like, I felt like I, this was a place 
were my foundations of that crisp writing. Um, I could allow that to come through. And then it humbled me because I realized I'd lost a little bit. Ah, And so it allowed me to revisit that, revisit that and revisit what that looked like. And um, the editing process was so helpful for me in that way. Um, I was really surprised. The hardest part for me was the vulnerability that I allowed to show through and then having to reread it through the editing process. Because I got to a point where I'm like, I can't read this anymore. Like this is breaking me open anew every time I read it. And so there has been a little bit of an element. I told my daughter, there's a part of me that feels like I was setting off an M80 and M80 and running away. (laughs) Like I literally, how far can I get I before this? And it's just gonna boom in a minute. Like, yeah. and but I'm gonna be way over there when it happens. And so there was, you know, I'm still, I'm still working through it. <laughs> I'm still yeah. working through it. Yeah, I, I have totally feel you on that. And even like rereading and also um, reworking when I was working on my chapter, I really had to titrate it because I was getting like all that stuff was happening in my body again and I had to honor it and go okay now it's time for a break or you know now it's time to work on a different section um yes and the the huge beautiful thing that I saw happen was that each time I returned it lessened yes it did so it's a way of like yes kind of removing doing a um you know a, a storyectomy <laughs> and you know what i think i think it was almost like packaging it up you know yeah. and another thing i love to do is is wrap gifts and mm. so in my mind it kind of it there's that analogy of me you know again getting that crisp corner putting just the tiniest bit of tape getting the perfect ribbon yeah. you know it looks good but not too good you know? <laughs> like well it looks good but it still looks like a person lovingly wrapped yes. as opposed to a robot <laughs> absolutely yes oh that's beautiful so as a gift um thinking of your chapter as a gift what are you like so excited for readers to get to experience or like what's lighting you up as you're ready to hand them this gift and they get to read it on Friday? I hope that it's just a bit of resonance. I hope Mm -hmm. that, that what they see or feel when they read it isn't focused on some of the, the traumas that I've eclipsed, but that it's more, um, seeing their own pattern, perhaps in that pattern and saying, oh my gosh, even though that's such a small thing, it could potentially have a big impact Mm -hmm. um, on thought process or self-love or even just the way that we step forward in the world. Because oftentimes I think um, in terms of what I talk about in the chapter is course when we talk about those things as we're writing it we're we're reliving doing it yeah and are the microscope is on at such a higher magnification i was seeing it in so many small ways in my day-to-day living um Mm. and it that's kind of beautiful it's like wow 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 and that allowed me to release any guilt for doing something that I thought maybe wasn't a healthy way of living. I might. So let me make sure I'm understanding. Cause this sounds really cool. Like you're seeing how pervasive these thought patterns and being patterns are so that when they show up in your life, yes. instead of like, why am I doing this? You're like, Oh, even like there. Data. Yeah. Yeah. It's you're like, like even data. there, it's even like going emotion. grocery shopping. Exactly. <laughs> no, it's true. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's really powerful. I, I I hope people have that as a takeaway. And again, it sounds like this piece of dropping the breadcrumbs and your invitation to people in reading your chapter is they get to um, like have an invitation to have the reflection for themselves and go, oh, is that also coming up for me? Is this yes. a pattern that I'm having? And just be with it and be with it in love. You know, there's such a an amazing gift you always give when you share your story and other people get to go, 
oh, somebody gets it. Somebody yeah. knows what it's like. And it was one of the first conversations you and I even had. Yeah. And it stuck with me because the way you said it just stuck with me. And it was like, isn't that what we're, isn't that just what we all truly want deep down is to connect authentically. And I mean, that's essentially what it is. It's like, I think each one of us in this book come through with such a vulnerable authenticity, a piece of us. And that hopefully that what that does is number one, somebody can resonate with that, but they can also see, well, if those people can step forward with courage, I can do it too. Yeah. And I, I, it's a building, right? Because the um, the reason human beings are kind of freaking cool is because we don't start each new generation having to relearn all of the things. Now, this mm. can have a real negative impact because we carry forward all the shit that ain't been working. <laughs> right? We're like, oh, yeah, let's perpetuate this. But we have this opportunity. So it's the resonance and somebody getting to see, oh, that's what an authentic share looks like. And it makes me feel so good when somebody does it. And what if I did that? And um, I love the question that Annette posed, Annette being um, the founder of Sanctuary Publishing, who's uh, putting out the, the book for those of you uh, who don't know her. But, you know, she posed this question, like, what does it mean to you to empower the next generation of women? And I was really thinking about this, that I want them to be able to build starting from where we show them we are. You know, like yes. here, here's a foundation build on that instead of having to start building, not just on the ground level, but like really sub basement. When you think about what a lot of young people and young women, especially are facing today, yes, build starting higher. <laughs> yes. And you know, that, that I, I'm a business consultant and a business strategist. And so yeah. having been in meetings earlier this morning, it, it lends me to thinking of team, of a team effort, like as humans, yeah. aren't we a team regardless of generation or, you know, whatever else, whatever country we come from or whatever, um, it's, we should be taking care of one another. Yeah. That's whether when we thrive. Words or with actions, um, you know, that's what we're here to do. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm. So I'd love to ask just one final question. What words of wisdom, advice, uh, anything, love, little love, would you like to share with anybody who's thinking about or wanting to write their story? Mm. First of all, it is not selfish. Um, and that if you feel like writing something about yourself, putting something out there gives you fear, then that means you're supposed to do it. Mm. If you feel the fear, that's, uh, that's a loaf of bread. It's not even a breadcrumb <laughs> leading you forward. It's the whole loaf. <laughs> Maybe you have to do this. Now you have to figure out how you're going to make that happen. Mm, that's so beautiful. And it can happen in a really loving, I mean, I, I like that so much. And I, I think that's true that the fear is the, yeah, this is the thing I'm supposed to pay attention to. And then the way it can unfold can be so supportive, like find mm. a circle of women, <laughs> heal through writing, you know, yeah. <laughs> find, find a publisher to work with who's going to like acknowledge and, and help you move through these portals because they really are significant portals. Um, but do it. <laughs> yes. Do it. Totally do it. Oh, so beautiful. Um, so, uh, for people who want to stay in touch and follow Michelle and learn more about her work, they can, people can connect through Facebook and in this, um, in write and flow, we'll share your, your email if people want to get in touch directly. And, um, the book comes out Friday, September 9th. And you will be able to get it for just 99 cents on the day it drops. And um, we're so excited because all the proceeds from this book are going to an organization called Cast LA, which is um, stopping human trafficking and modern slavery. So we are hoping that our stories empower more people to break the silence and also, you know, through our actions and through um, money 
proceeds from the book. We're, <laughs> we're wanting more people to not be silenced and to speak up for those who don't have a voice. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us, Michelle. Thank you. Thank I'm you. honored to get to talk you. with you. Have an amazing rest of your day, everybody. And as always, happy writing. Take care.